All right, here is a quick tip for you new AR-15 owners out there. If you just purchased an AR-15, I highly recommend you get online. Just type in AR-15 parts in Google and you'll see a myriad number of sites. I highly recommend you to get on and buy two replacement parts for your AR-15. These are two real inexpensive parts that wear out over time. They don't wear out quickly. But if you plan on shooting this rifle a lot, right at about the 3,500 to 4,000 round mark, you start to see these parts break. Sometimes a little bit sooner if you shoot your rifle a lot more and you shoot a lot of range downrange, a lot of rounds downrange in a very quick manner. And those two parts are the extractor spring and the three O rings on the tail of your bolt. Now, the extractor spring is one of the things that is a common failure in AR-15s over time. People never think to replace it. And the O-rings are the same way. Think of it as brakes on your car. For most of us, when we replace the brakes, we forget about those brakes until all of a sudden either the tires are screeching uh, from the rotors squealing every time we hit the brakes or we just find out, well, we don't have brakes anymore. Then we worry about replacing the brakes again. A lot of people do that with an AR-15. They'll buy an AR-15 and they'll just shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot. Uh, and then they won't think about replacements until all of a sudden something goes wrong and the rifle's double feeding or it's not cycling like it should. And unfortunately, sometimes that'll happen at the worst time, like say at a tactical rifle class that you spent a lot of money for, or even worse yet, in a self-defense situation where your life is on the line. Now the extractor spring, first off, let's talk about the extractor spring. If your AR-15 starts to double feed, that's usually one of the root causes, especially if you kind of weed out. Sometimes it's the magazine that can create problems, but if you got a really good magazine, but yet your rifle is still double feeding, take a look at that extractor spring, because usually they're very loose, there's not much tension, and the only way to fix it is to put a new spring in, or you can put something like a crane O-ring or a defender O-ring in there to increase the tension, and then you'll be good to go. That's a part that just costs cents per, uh, per spring. It's a real easy part to replace. I got a few extras. I also have a bunch of crane O-rings. I have them on my full-size AR, and I have a crane O-ring in this AR. Uh, very good investment. It's going to keep your rifle running a lot longer. Along with that, the gas O-rings. That's something that a lot of people completely forget about. The gas O-rings on the tail of your bolt, they're small metal pieces, and they're subjected to a lot of pressure especially when you're rapid firing these things. If you're going through a tactical carbine class or something where you're putting a lot of rounds out, that's a lot of stress on those little parts. Those O-rings might break or just bend or for whatever reason, they'll just kind of deteriorate to the point that gas is escaping through. When that happens, you're not going to have a clean function of the bolt. The O-rings, same thing, very easy to replace. What I like to do is get the one-piece O-rings. I have a one-piece O-ring in here. That way I don't have to worry about separating the little gaps on the three-piece O-rings so they're not lined up, which if they're lined up, you're going to get gas leakage and you're going to get a um, bad functioning rifle. You know, your bolt's not going to be cycling as good as it could be, and you're going to uh, be prone to a lot of malfunctions. The one-pieces, you don't have to worry about it, and they last a little bit longer. I also have a one-piece in here, and I have a one-piece in my full size. So again, they're very inexpensive parts. If you've got the money to spend $600 to $1,000 on an AR-15, uh, most likely you've got a few extra dollars to go ahead and buy those parts. And that's one thing that I highly advocate. Before you get into putting all this uber fancy Gucci gear on your rifle, like the Magpul stuff and everything that's really trendy to get, work on that bolt first. Make sure that bolt's good. Do the proper things, make sure it's staked correctly, make sure you've got these extra springs and whatnot, or crane O-ring, make sure you got good gas seal. All the internals, make sure the internals are good before you start worrying about the external of the rifle. So I hope some of you guys found this video knowledgeable. Again, just because these parts wear out doesn't mean the AR-15 is a bad platform. Sometimes people think the AR-15 is a bad platform because they'll pick up an AR-15 that might be malfunctioning, all they got to do is look at it just for a second, figure out what's wrong, and realize that, hey, just like pretty much all other mechanical devices out there, mechanical things wear out over time. You just got to keep up with the maintenance. The AR-15 is certainly no exception to that. Even rifles like the AK, 
the AK has got to be maintained over time. Granted, the AK will last a hell of a lot longer than an AR just because of the way it's built. Still, an example with the AK is even though it functions great for years and years and years and years and years through hundreds of thousands of rounds, that barrel is going to wear out eventually. So even with something like an AK, you still have to replace something. So, all right, thanks for watching. Feel free to leave those questions, comments, and video responses. Stay safe.